Welcome to One on One here at the beautiful Newark Museum. It is my honor, my pleasure to introduce um, Krista Clark, who is the Senior Curator, Arts of Global Africa, right here at the Newark Museum. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's our pleasure. Talk about the uh, Arts of Global Africa. What are we talking about? Um, Arts of Global Africa is the collection that I oversee as curator here. It's a collection that started in 1917, so we're approaching the centennial of the collection. Um, it's about 6,000 works of art ranging the whole continent and extending into its diaspora, thus the global and Arts of Global Africa. What are we looking at uh, right away over here? Uh, the work we're looking at here is one of my favorite works from the collection. It's a, believe it or not, it's a masquerade headdress that would be worn on the head. It weighs over 50 pounds. No, 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 no. <laughs> Wait a minute. 50 pounds. Yes. A headdress. Yes. It's, you know, it's a, it's a headdress that is, the artistry is as much in the creation of the work, which is um, done by a very renowned artist named Bumboye. We know his name. Um, and he in fact gave it the title wow. you can look at it for a complete day because it's so detailed it basically represents all these different people that make up a yoruba community in nigeria a what and kind of community a yoruba it's a yoruba speaking um culture in in southwest nigeria and that's where bamboy practiced uh, in the early 20th century so when when people are here and they're looking at a piece like that how do you break it down for them so they can appreciate and understand it? People like myself who mm -hmm. don't have a background, don't understand, don't have any context. How do you do that? That's a great question. I mean, I start by, you know, talking about the work itself. I think starting with the work itself, I talk about the name of the artist and the fact that he would have been commissioned by somebody to create the work. I talk about its use. It was a work that was created for a masquerade performance, a performance that would celebrate um, basically the community, the Yoruba community. And so it's an event, an event a that festival, happens something. Once a year. Um, I talk about the fact that it would be made to be worn, so it would sit, somebody would actually wear it on top of their head and perform these acrobatic movements, amazing. which is pretty amazing. Yeah. So you have to put it in context for people. Otherwise, yeah. you're saying, what am I looking at? It's important to put, especially with works from Africa, uh, traditional works of African art, you need to put them in context because the way we see them in museums is very different than the way you would see it in its original context. Do this for us because uh, one of the interviews we did uh, that really, I think, pretty sure it's uh, going to kick off this series of uh, one-on-one -on -one interviews here from the Newark Museum mm -hmm. with Stephen Kern, your, uh, your uh -huh. leader here, talked about the African art collection. That history is powerful and important. How has it evolved? Well, we began collecting in 1917. We we're one of the first museums to Why? collect African art. Our founder, you know, basically appreciated beauty in everyday works from world cultures. And so you mean John Cotton Dana. John Cotton Dana. And so he began collecting African art as an interest in presenting, you know, the art of world cultures, which was very forward thinking because most museums didn't really appreciate African art. Who was thinking that in 1917? John Cotton Dana. <laughs> we're very fortunate. What a forward thinking. Yeah. So our first work of art was from South Africa. Okay. Um, and we, when the museum moved into its first purpose-built building in 1926, we hoped... Because you started start at, at the library and came over... We came over here in 1926. To Washington and, Street. Washington Street. Right. And we presented our first African art exhibition in 1926. What kind of reaction do you, have you gotten over the years? Because it had to be sustained and strong enough to sustain this effort over all these years to be approaching 100 years. Well, I think we've we've always shown African art. We've acquired works of African art. I, I've been here about 15 years now, and one of the things I've really tried to do is bring the collection up to today and broaden the collection to include modern and contemporary art from Africa so that our visitors see not only the historical traditions that are yeah. important, but also what artists are working on today. And you, you actually go to Africa yes. to find pieces. I do. And you're expanding it. This is not cheap. No. And you're also expanding the space. You're bringing it down to the first floor here at the yes. museum? Yes. We're Why is that significant? Well, I think um, right now the African collection, along with the Native American collection, is in a separate building than the rest of the art collection. So bringing the works, bringing this collection down to the first floor, the first thing that our visitors will see, leading into the rest of the museum's art collections, is a significant move. And it's going to be you know, very exciting to see African art on the first floor. So many museums place it in the basement or tucked away. So I think having it on the first floor and in a new reinstallation that's going to be a fresh interpretation of the collection, I think it's going to be really exciting. But also, 
the ability to show the works of unknown artists important? Yes. Why? To show the works of, of African artists? Yeah, people, I think, people who are not known. I think it's important to show the works from Africa because I think many people have certain stereotypes of what they think. What, are they, what do you think we think it is? I think that people think that African art is mostly, you know, masks or figural sculptures. I think they don't have a sense that some of the world's biggest cities are on the African continent. Um, they ha don't have a sense of where African artists live and create works, the sophistication of their artworks, um, the depth of the studio programs that exist in Africa. So, I, and I also the relevance of the historical tradition. So, I hope that they'll have a sense of the rich history, but also contemporary activities as well. I'm curious, why did you get into this? I came about it through just the pure visual impact of African art. I was studying modernism as an undergraduate and the impact of African art on artists like Picasso and Matisse and became fascinated with the forms that influenced them. When we look at works by a painting by Matisse or a sculpture by Picasso, we're really seeing them borrowing examples of African art. Is that right? It is right. It's true. Because I'm thinking of the limited experience I have. I'm thinking Matisse. Really? African art? He collected, it's there. The influence is there. He collected, Picasso collected, their sketchbooks show, wow. you know, sketches of the works in their collection, the works in museums in Paris, and they integrated that into their work. Uh, one more real quick. Um, Jackie, what's it called? Many came back. Can, can I yes. show it and you talk about it? The work, uh, Many Came Back, uh, is by the Ghanaian artist Ellen Atsui, who practices, he uh, works in Nigeria now, and he runs one of the continent's most important programs um, for the African art. We collected this work in 2005, and he has since then become an international art star. Um, he, by the, when the time we collected it, he'd been practicing for three decades. This work is made entirely from discarded bottle caps from liquor bottles. Is that right? So these were all things that he's found in basically garbage dumps in Nigeria um, that he's flattened and shaped and created this beautiful shimmering tapestry that looks soft and drapey like a cloth, but actually is made from metal and taking something that's you know discarded and, and no longer valued and making something that's really beautiful. And it's hard to appreciate it looking at it on television. You have to come down and take a look at it and see it from yes. a 3D perspective, right? Yes, you have to see it in person. It's beautiful, it's on view in the galleries, spectacular piece. Dr. Krista Clark is senior curator, Arts of Global Africa, right here at the extraordinary uh, Newark Museum, who has been, they've been so great. They've been so great to have us here to do our public broadcasting and FIO series. Okay. Also, you can check us out on public radio and on digital platforms as well. And uh, thank you for having thank us you. here. Thank you. Thank you very much. One on one from the Newark Museum. Be right back right after this. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. And by the Newark Museum, in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at Newark Museum has been provided by Bank of America, PSE&G, Cohn Resnick, University Hospital, Newark, New Jersey, Johnson & Johnson, Prudential Financial's Global Communications Department, and by the North Ward Center. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.